No, nah, never. First time. Did you ever go to the Sydney one? I had been, yeah, had been to the one in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's as big as this one, but. Was that before you made your way into the A League? Uh, yeah, it would have been when I was a bit younger, yeah. Jeez, so. it's crazy to think that um, Ultra has been around uh, for that long, but also yourself, you know, coming into the scene. You've had an amazing couple of years. Has it been surreal for you, or have you sort of? You know, as a young kid, did you work hard to get to where you are? Um, yeah, I think every young kid uh, to get deserve an opportunity to play. Um, yeah, would have worked hard during their junior years, and I think that's what I did. Um, yeah. And then I did that, yeah, to get an opportunity. And you're a Sydney boy, so, you know, growing up in such a, a big state for football, did you, you know, did you em em emphasize yourself to, you know, to a certain player growing up? Like, did you idolize a certain player in Australia or globally? I'd say globally, yeah. I used to watch Messi quite a bit. Um, yeah. yeah. Similar stature, so both small. Um, so yeah, it's probably someone I looked up to back then. Was that something that you always grew up about with the coaches and just people always saying, you know, you're too small for a footballer? Yeah, a lot of the time, even especially when I was a lot younger. Yeah. Um, they used to say, even at trials, like you're still too small. We look at yourself now, you're, you're still playing, I think, in Australia, the most elite football against people like uh, fellow uh, ultra fan here, uh, Leo Lacroix, who's a pretty big fella. Yeah. Even Roston Griffiths last year at City, you know. Uh, is that a challenge, do you think, for yourself as a footballer? But also, do you think that's an inspiration for kids similar to your stature, but also build? Yeah, I think I could be an if, uh, inspiration uh, to everyone. Um, I guess it doesn't matter your height, yeah. age, anything. Uh, anything's uh, possible. Yeah, Messi did it. Exactly. And it's funny because you look at United's latest signing with Martinez, everyone's always talking about how small he is for a centre back. I think in the end, if you're a passionate footballer and you've got the dedication like yourself, it doesn't really stop you from anything. Yeah, I think I agree. Yeah, I think as long as you put your head forward and just uh, do your job for a team, it um, doesn't matter who you are or what you do, um, I think. Yeah, as long as you put your job, do your job. Yeah, uh, that's the most important thing. How was um, growing up in Sydney for you? Was it was junior football something that you know was a challenge, or did you find it an easy transition into Sydney FC? Um, so yes, junior football was always a challenge. Uh, coming when I was a lot younger, I used to uh, go to trials and didn't find myself making teams. Yep. Um, and then yeah, as I grew older, playing in the MPL system, um, I was lucky enough to be chosen to the Sydney FC Academy which I was there for five years, so. Was that after the Youth League had gone, or did you no. leave last season? No, the Youth, the youth league? league was going on then. Uh, I left, we have won the Youth League, mm -hmm. and they haven't, I don't think they've done no. a competition since then, so. I don't think they're bringing it back. It's a bit of a, would you say it's a, a disappointing thing as someone who's, you know, won the Youth League, would you say it's a sad thing to see younger kids not playing in that level and playing NPL levels? Like, I know our City boys at the moment have gone up but they're playing MPL 2 in Victoria. Would yeah. you say that's a, a bad thing for the young kids? I think for young kids, that everyone always talks about it. Uh, the more games, the better. Um, yeah, exactly. and that competition, obviously, going up against younger A-League a Academy players, um, I think it's always good to burst players at your age and also as good as you or the best um, in the country. So I think it was a good competition. How old were you when you played and won the league for Youth League? Um, I was 18, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. And I think with the Youth League, you came against some other A League players who were injured and stuff. I remember at C, you know, Vidosic and stuff, when he was coming back from his injury, he was playing in the team. Yeah. But um, the other day, when Preston Lions played Melbourne City, um, Max Caputo was one on one with Sasha Ognanovsky, former <laughs> Socceroo, Preston Lions great, and Brisbane <laughs> Raw, of course, who was like, uh, I think he was just in his late 40s yeah. as a centre back, and Max Caputo is probably like 16, <laughs> 16 17. Years. Would you boy. say that's a negative thing for footballers, or do you think that's also a challenge for Maxi? Or people like, you know, yeah, your I, age group at the time. I think it's a challenge. Yeah. I think it's unreal uh, to come up against players that also have been there and put in there, got the experience. <laughs> but it could almost be your dad. Huh? It could almost be his dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, the seeing you go from, uh, I think, Sydney FC to City, it was an amazing transition to watch, you know, yourself become Marco Tilio. 
Um, I know you have a big support behind you, the Tilios. If people don't know, just watch a lot of the games when he plays at the state, mainly in uh, New South Wales. His family follow you everywhere. Um, how, how was the transition been for yourself to get into the A-League? How was it, you know, stepping up and making a debut for the Sydney FC team? Yeah, it was a tough journey. Um, obviously, wanting to play uh, throughout my youth years, uh, playing with such a, in such a good team at Sydney FC at the time. Um, so much experience, so much quality, and being so young, I just wanted to almost just put my full, best foot forward to play. Um, and then I was lucky enough to go away with the Champions League, I remember, uh, with the squad. Yep. And we versus Yokohama Marinos um, away, and I got on, and I'd done quite a few couple of good things. And um, that weekend we had Mariners um, away, so we come back straight from Japan, yeah. come to versus Mariners, and Steve said I'll be on the bench. Um, and yeah, from there I got an opportunity to get on. I got on and I scored, I think after so 60 seconds just or so. Classic Marco Tilio. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, I was fortunate enough to get in the right position to score. Um, after six seconds on my debut and then assist Harry van der Sarg as well. So yeah, it was a, quite a memorable uh, moment yeah. for me. The whole Champions League experience, did you play at y y Yokohama over there? I did get on against How Yokohama. How amazing is that stadium? Yeah, unbelievable. Was that your first taste of uh, non-Australian football playing overseas? Because I know you, with City you went to Thailand recently, but was that your first time overseas? Ah, uh, yeah, for in the Asian, um, yeah. the Asian Champions League, yeah. More I've as had a professional footballer yourself? I did play uh, with the young young Socceroos okay. and stuff like that, so yeah. we did go away for the, when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that stadium was unbelievable, but this had seat warmers and everything on the bench. Oh, did they? so I? cool, yeah. Ah, come on, A-League, get some seat warmers. <laughs> Use that Channel 10 money. Um, but I think that experience of just going to Yokohama and for a young player like yourself, and look, I know looking into the future now, we've seen you do a lot of things for City. How, you know, how has the challenge been for you to not only you know, when you moved over the city, um, a lot of pressure, uh, I think it was from the city fans. It's always like these things with the A-League where it's like, we need to sign big marquee players. It's always this challenge for fans being like, we need people to bring players, uh, fans to the stadium because of players. But um, you really put your name into the game and we'll talk about more uh, what you've done. But how, how's the A-League for you, for someone who's actually on the pitch, is it a challenging game? Uh, is there anything that you could say from your perspective that you know, a lot of fans watching and listening would um, yeah, just broaden their thought? Yeah, I think uh, from the outside looking in, um, people judge it um, supposedly for not what it is. Yeah. Um, I think people think it's a lot easier than what it is actually on the field. And when you're actually on the field, like in Australian football, I think the tempo and everything like that is quite high. Um, it is. If you compare it to, I don't know, as you say, I don't know, say Scotland for instance, Scotland, the Scottish uh, league, it's 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, in the A league's very tackles. similar. Yeah, <laughs> flying tackles. Um, but A league's a lot similar. It's, it's um, non stop. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think the quality and experience we have in um, our country is, yeah, I think, un underwhelmed almost. Because um, when you're actually training every day with some players, the likes of Matthew Lecky, Jay McLaren, uh, these boys, like, every single day. Uh, and yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't ever judge myself, but yeah, um, these boys are, like, unbelievable. Like, the quality they have, they show it every single day, and yeah. to go out there and then play a game, uh, people judge it off that experience, but, or that performance, um, I think that's a big thing here, that people judge it from the outside and not actually knowing how difficult it can be. Um, it's almost like people are too fast to judge the game um, and never understand how hard it is to actually be a footballer. Um, you've had two amazing coaches with um, Corica and, of course, the one only PK. Um, how has it been, you know, with different styles of coaches? Of course, we both know there's two different styles. Just looking at the players of the past they were, yeah. um, what was the transition like for you going from a coach like Corica to PK? And don't worry, PK probably won't watch this too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was difficult. Um, <laughs> Obviously, PK is an intimidating person, um, just in general. But he's, yeah, at the same time, he's, he's a good guy off the field. Goal. But yeah, he's a he's a hard guy to um, impress. So, but yeah, he's been on my back ever since I met him from day one. Don't worry, I've heard some comments yeah. <laughs> at uh, training. <laughs> <laughs> that first handshake I took with him when I met him, he almost broke my hand, <laughs> and I hadn't even signed for the club yet. Um, but yeah, he's been um, he's been yeah amazing for me uh, yeah. so far. That's good. That's amazing. And look, I think uh, we'll get to the part now with like City 
um, you you made yourself known straight away. There was that, I've got some notes here, like that partnership you had with um, Collar and um, the finals time where you guys literally just linked up and then there's the derbies and everything like that. Um, what was the first time at City like, you know, coming to a club that's sort of known, I think you went from a club like Sydney to City who in some sort of uh, status wise, they're known as the more money guys um, <laughs> to the outside fans, but club wise, was it a big change? I know City's really changing up the, the picture ever since you moved, you've gone from Bandura to Casey. Yeah. What was the move like, an you know, eye opener? Yeah, the transition, um, I say it was smooth, a football sense um, from coming from Sydney to Melbourne. Yeah. Um, so obviously coming here to play football. So, but then obviously the demands from the club and the coaching staff and the players, I think were a lot higher here. Yeah. Um, but I think that helped me grow um, as a player and as a person. Yeah, I just thrived off that and try to yeah do my best and just keep growing every day. And yeah, I think that what um, this club um, has brought to me as a person and yeah, hope to continue. <laughs> What was the move to Melbourne like though? I know Sydney people are a bit, uh, I'm not going to say pretentious when it comes to Melbourne food and coffee, but um, and you're a Sydney boy and we actually didn't get to speak about your upbringing, but like, what was the move to Melbourne like? Was it a whole different city for you? I think it's it? very, simil very similar. Yeah. Um, in the sense of, yeah, like what I do, cafes, uh, going out to eat, all that kind of stuff. You I almost think. dress more Melbourne than me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I think wog. <laughs> just me dress from wog. I, th I think the, the thing with Melbourne is like, we just wear no colour. It's always yeah, black. Yeah, always, yeah, plain. Grey, black, white. Yeah, yeah, it's the best part. Yeah? Yeah, I love wearing Favourite coffee shop or anything? You can plug any places you like oh. to go? Tough. It's tough? I know, yeah, I, I couldn't name one. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really, to be fair, I don't roam too much. But you did kind of come here when uh, the whole yeah, world went crap. it was lockdown, crap. yeah. <laughs> Didn't get to really enjoy much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was lockdown when I first came, so it was yeah. tough. But yeah, I've experienced a fair bit of Melbourne and I really enjoy it. I like it. I think the only difficult part, obviously, is family. Yeah. As you know, I'm quite close to my family um, and I have no one here. So I'm just all by myself and I've got a few of the boys. Yeah, it's always like, like I said before, uh, your family's always in the stadium. Um, everyone, if you're watching, uh, go to just any of the games in Sydney during the lockdown period. I think it was MacArthur and just the whole Tilio family. How many siblings do you have? I've only got brother and sister. Yep. Um, but your yeah, whole entourage then, comes. Cousins. Yeah, then I've got yeah my dad's brothers. So you're so my cousins being. and then my mum's got... I think I don't even know, three brothers and three sisters or something like that. And they always just broke up into yeah, their kids. Then, yeah, they, they, their kids and my cousins. Are yeah. any of them Sydney or Western Sydney fans or anything like that? And they were not the anymore. City kids? No, they're all Sydney well, fans. All, they were Sydney fans, not anymore. But. <laughs> it's always from the family. I think before we're speaking with one of the team members, your, your family's uh, from Bari? Yeah. And uh, Cinque, was it? Cinque Fundi. So yeah. the Italian heritage, did you grow up watching the Azuri and everything like that? Yeah, I did. I uh, watched, especially like the World Cups. Yeah, uh, when sorry I was about us knocking you out, the <laughs> Macedonia knocking you out. How was, um, how was that growing up watching a lot of the Azuri and stuff? Yeah, it was unreal. Um, the experience, um, watching such top quality players, uh, the world class players. Favourite player? Pirlo. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I thought he was unbelievable. His next All level. All time. Yeah, great. I know before you said you're a Chelsea fan, which I think is definitely one of the worst choices. Uh, anyone in the Serie A? Was there any team that you sort of like? I know from Buddy, definitely would be Buddy, but yeah. is there anyone else that you sort of watched as a kid? You said Juventus a little bit. No, we can't be friends now. <laughs> I'm in, so I'm like, you'll be. <laughs> no, yeah, Juventus. Yeah? I support Juventus. Of course, so. Peter Lord being out there. Yeah. That's good. Um, but I think. Coming back to your family side of things, uh, how is yeah, how's that whole transition? I know there's always that talk of um, Australians going overseas and being away from family, but now being in Melbourne, has it been tough for you being away from them? It was towards the start, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more than what it is now, because I've gotten used to it. Yeah. Um, I almost enjoy it a little bit more, not being every day. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, it was tough uh, at the start, just coming home, there's no one sort of there, it was sort of thing. So it can get lonely, and I think that's, the biggest thing in football, even moving overseas, that's the biggest factor, getting lonely and yeah. stuff like that. And people don't understand how difficult it can be. I think it's easier because I've only moved to Melbourne, only moved an hour away, flight. So, um, but yeah, I think, it, look, it's the other side of it, moving overseas or something. 36 hours, yeah, three it's, flights. It's tough. 
time um, zone difference. Yeah, it's tough. Really... I know, and I think the the whole thought of just being away from your family sometimes can affect your game and mental sort of side of thing of it. Yeah. Um, was it what was the first thing you sort of maybe was a realization when you moved to Melbourne? Being away from family was like not having something there or not having a hug from. Like for me, I think the biggest thing would be not being able to speak to my mum. Yeah. Were you closer with your parents? Which yeah. Were, yeah. Ah, oh, about the same. But yeah, mum busts yeah. my chops every day. <laughs> Messages, calls, everything. But um, yeah, I think the hardest part was unpacking the suitcase for the first time and knowing, because usually you go away with a suitcase, you usually yeah. pack it and you're going back, you know what I mean? But nah, I was just unpacking it and yeah, realising that that's it. Like you're here now and yeah, it was yeah, pretty much, tough. yeah. Good segue though, packing your bags and going off to uh, Thailand recently, but also uh, the Olympics. Uh, which one should we talk about first? Olympics? Yeah. How was that? Unbelievable. Yeah? The yeah, experience, crazy. I was watching the goal before when I was walking and I was like to myself, this kid literally just jumped onto the pitch <laughs> and did that against the Argentinians. One, one, I think they were the most saltiest um, when you scored that. But two, as an Aussie fan, that goal when you scored, not only for you, but I think for a lot of Australians, people were like pretty off their seats, screaming, Twitter was going crazy. Uh, what was it like for you getting selected? And I know, of course, with all the lockdowns and stuff and then going over there, what, what was the process? Getting selected, then when you got there, what, how did you, um, what was the pre- yeah, What was the process? Yeah, so pretty much, I think I've told the story a couple of times. Um, I was going on holidays back home, see mm-hmm. the family and there, then got a call from the club saying I'm That's potential right. to go away to the Olympics because I had to do a few things. Um, and then I woke up the next morning with a call here yeah, from Graham Arnold and he had told me that I'd been selecting the team and then from there I'd packed my bags in two days I think it was and off I went so off I went straight to Tokyo and met up with the team because the team were already there doing a pre-season camp yeah. uh, pre-tournament uh, camp so I went in late and um, yeah then started training with the team uh, I think it was a week or so out from um, the tournament then yeah, another opportunity to prove myself in training and try again on the pitch, and I'd um, done quite well in training. And then yeah, got out um, to the Argentina game, first game, obviously pretty heavy uh, opposition. Yeah. Um, yeah, got, got the opportunity, sat on the bench, went on, and just yeah, just go out the there and just play, and yeah, just got that moment and that feeling just to yeah get forward, score. I know it was a lot of build up with the city stuff, getting you to that point too. Having such a, not only successful season for yourself as an individual footballer, team effort as well, but getting to that Olympic is almost like a prophetic moment for you to show yourself to the Australian people that, you know, this is Marco Tilio, you know, the hustle. But um, after that, literally everything just happened. National team call up, playing with the Socceroos. Yeah, a lot's happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a big first year. How was uh, it with your roommate? I think you were with Taris, yeah? Yeah, with Taris. How was it with that? Like, being like, oh, sorry, mate, i got to go come back later. <laughs> yeah. Um, nah, he's always supportive. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. he would be. But, um, yeah, it's, it was a weird one. I'm yeah. always in and out of the house. It's my house, so he's just chilling there and I'm away. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's tough for you as well, because, like, one day you're just literally just enjoying the sort of calm of uh, playing A-League football, and then you've gone from there to Olympics down to the Socceroos. Does it, is that the pressure for you um, as an individual to always push yourself? Is that something that's now come into your mindset or is that something you're just like, I'm going to take it easy and just do my own thing uh, with nah. all that sort of, you know, up and up? Yeah, no, nah, I think the most important thing for me was just to continue performing. Um, and I think that's what the best players do. They perform consistently. Mm-hmm. And for me, yeah, it's training consistently, playing well, um, and then continue to get this type of opportunities to go to the national team and stuff like that. Amazing. And with the World Cup coming up, I think it's the most important. Uh, it's a um, big one. Yeah. You been to a World Cup as a fan? Never. Never? Yeah. Just watching TV. Your mum wouldn't let you, yeah? <laughs> nah. Nah? No Russia probably definitely wouldn't let nah. you go there. And maybe Brazil, the last yeah, one, Yeah, Brazil, nah. Nah, definitely. No I don't know, I got a European mum as well. She'd be like, I'd rather you uh, stay home and watch the game on TV. <laughs> nah, it's a good man. Look, I think um, a big season coming up with City as well. And of course, the World Cup. Um, there's a lot of things going on for you. Um, it's a bit of a season where you got like a two uh, week or three week uh, break for the A-League. And of course, you're pushing yourself for the World Cup. But um, how has the upcoming season been for you? What, like pre-season? 
Yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's been tough. Obviously, pre is always hard. Um, so, yeah, just getting the fitness levels right um, and obviously c combining with the new players and building uh, the team chemistry again um, with trial games, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. um, overall, I feel good. Um, the team looks good. Um, so, yeah, we're just excited to get this season started because it's been a long pre-season. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that whole pre-season thing, like so long? I think, yeah, I think... Yeah, it's got to be cut some way or some way or form. We'll bring the season forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it can be. Like I was speaking, speaking to Connor Metcalf, who moved over to St. Pauli, and he done six weeks um, and straight into the season. Yeah. We've been going for eight, and we've still got, I think, another four. Um, He's so, literally yeah. left, gone there, played yeah. season, and we're still Yeah, still off-season off season and pre-season. Do you reckon that's a, that definitely, like, distaste or gives the, the, the bad taste to a lot of footballers wanting to play in Australia? No, I don't think that sort of things, but um, I think it just, yeah, I think if you keep it ticking over, it keeps people eager mm. to want to watch or go to games or even us players, we want to play games, want to be competitive. Not and, sit around and Yeah, we around. don't want to sit around and trial games, you know, for three months playing trial games at the Australian Cup. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, you're pretty much just training almost every day three months until the season starts. Yeah. You wear these boots, right? Yes. So what has it been like for you to transition from someone who just wears the boots that their parents buy to now being a sort of a face for the swoosh brand? Um, how has the transition for that been for you too? Just the realization mm -hmm. that now you're representing the brand like the swoosh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, overall I think it's pretty sick that, yeah, you get, obviously you get boots um delivered to myself but um yeah since i was a kid yeah wearing i've worn nike pretty much my whole life yeah. and the the whole boot factor for you i think when i go to cfa i see all the boots on the thing um yeah like what, what was your first pair of boots of course you said you wore nike as a kid but do you remember your first pair of boots parents buying them yeah parents always bought saving up yeah for them. yeah my parents bought my first pair i remember I'm pretty sure they were black and white mm -hmm. nike, Classic. nike boots um but yeah, that was my first pair, and then ever since then, yeah, I used to wear the same pair for a while. It's like yeah. you used to buy a pair for the season, and you used to buy them with the thumb gap, so that they don't grow, oh, you don't grow out of them and that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just a good budget saving. Yeah, there. so maybe you can so, wear it next year. Yeah, so you can still wear them. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool, and then obviously I'm fortunate enough to get boots now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I tend to wear the same boots like that first year at City. I wore the same pair of boots from pre-season until um, that goal at the Olympics. And yeah. they, they were like trashed. They were ripping everything, but- Still keep them? Yeah, still got them. That's good. Um, but yeah, they had a lot of memories of them. So they pair of boots and I felt I actually have one question that a lot of people, um, if you check out your Instagram, or even my Instagram, because I always notice it, um, your socks, you cut them. Now I know a lot of footballers um, cut the back heel of their boots. So that was like the sort of pressure. Yeah. Why the socks? So, uh, yeah, it's something to do with my calves. Yep. So there's actually a medical reason behind oh, it. Cool. So it's not, uh, I don't know, a trend or something to look cool. No, no. But, um, yeah, it's just to yeah, just give my calves more space. Calves. Yeah. yeah, wow. I know a lot of people wear the grip socks and stuff like that. So that's something that, you know, I, I wear when I run. So it's always been a help for me to get the grip in the shoe. But the socks is a relief to the tension in yeah. the muscle, yeah? My muscle, yeah. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, I did a few photo series. I'm like... The infamous Tilio socks. Oh, yeah. Been, yeah, look, like Jude Bellingham. Yeah, he yeah, cut I've his seen sock. Um, yeah, a few people cut him. I think it could be similar. Yeah. Like uh, condition to what they have. I think, I don't know, or maybe they're doing a fashion statement, I don't know. I did notice <laughs> when I was in Thailand, um, which again, we'll probably won't talk too much about, but like, yeah. I saw you cutting him before the game and I was like, is this like some sort of artistic, like, what, what is your thing? Do you have a certain amount of socks? Is there a tradition or you just cut them uh, wherever? No, nah, I usually just cut them wherever, just <laughs> the point of where it's usually most tight. But yeah. it tends to be, yeah, four or five holes. Um, but yeah. Talking about Thailand, we'll um, wrap this up to soon. I, I think it's been like 28 minutes. <laughs> um, I might get producer Mitch to click if it stops recording. No, nah, it's going good. I'll give you a shout out. Um, Thailand, we were there for what? I think three weeks. Being away from your family for so long. How was that? Yeah, it was cool, different experience, obviously, yeah. with COVID and that made it a lot more difficult than what it was, uh, what it would have been, sorry. Obviously, having home and away games in the Champions League helps. Six games in, like, was it Yeah, we ended weeks? up playing six games in 
you know, playing every three days, so it was tough. Um, yeah. But yeah, that experience overall was yeah to come up against um, the Thai team and the Koreans. Um, it was a good experience, and yeah, they were quality sides, and we. It's hot. Yeah, it was hot. Rained almost every day. <laughs> yeah, oh, rain, yeah. humid. I think the cold COVID thing was um, a bit of a stressful one. We couldn't yeah. leave the hotel. Yeah, it couldn't was really tough. Enjoy it. Couldn't do. Yeah, couldn't enjoy Thailand. Um, what TV series or music? What did you do? We were going to the pool or remember we had to wake up and we were literally waking up going to the pool and then we I do train. have to say walking past your room was the loudest room in the whole whole hotel. <laughs> yeah. Then we ended up getting um a VPN and watching like the footy and that. Oh those shares out. We, it's not sponsored by any VPN. Um, huh? No, usually when we talk about VPN on YouTube it's a it's a sponsor, but no sponsor of VPN today. Oh god. <laughs> um I remember we were talking about Nabu. How was your haircut that time in uh, Thailand? Oh. I didn't mind it then. I see you're going back to the, the slick that you yeah, had. Yeah, it's grown back now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, I actually enjoyed, liked it. Yeah. And, but then, um, yeah, I don't know. It was a hard one. I didn't want to cut my hair at all. But then everyone thought Full it looked better. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, I enjoyed it while I was there. Like, it's so much easier to maintain. You, wanna go, you wouldn't have gone as short as Maka did. A chance. <laughs> no and it chance. was tough, though. I think the, what would you rate out of five uh, as a, the, the Bay Root Barbers? Well, the name? Yeah, well, as in the boots. Yeah, the boots, you give it four so. or five. Four out of five? Yeah. There you go, guys. It's a four out of five for uh, the Beirut Barbers. Yeah. Um, no, no, look, we've, we're have we always privileged to have footballers like yourself come down, and there's always so much that we can talk about. But your career is basically all there for evidence of not only how hard you have worked to be who you are, um, not only how hard you've worked to inspire the next generation of footballers, you're still young in many ways, you know, on the football spectrum. Um, you've got ambitions for the future. You know, we've got the World Cup coming up. There's always that chance of you going overseas. Uh, yeah, what's, what's your future goals for yourself, like, apart from football? Is there anything else? Outside of football? Yeah, just what's, what's the thing? Uh, anything? Yeah, I think for me, just, yeah, to be successful um, in whatever I, whatever I do, whether it is in football or take a journey and some, do something else outside of football. I yep. think it's just, yeah, just work hard and be successful in something. Um, and that make, make my family proud. I think that's the most important thing to, yeah, always have people that love you that are proud of you. And yeah, um, yeah I think that's what I'm uh, planning to do over the next few years and um, see what happens. Uh, 100%. Uh, I, we haven't done this in the past, but I just thought about it now. I was like, we'll do a still quick fire type of thing. Uh, coffee order. Cappuccino. Yeah, no chocolate? No. Nah, no? Nah, just think. straight cap? Just straight cappuccino, yeah. <laughs> pasta, what type? Like, not oh. pasta flavour, I'm not, I'm not even mean like carbonara or bolognese, like what kind of pasta cut? Oh, penne. Penne? Yeah, mm, not sure. Not bad, not bad, that's different. Yeah. Um, Favourite part of it? Oh, you mean, you haven't been overseas? Never. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a question gone. Favourite musician right now? Artist? Chris Brown. Really? You're yeah, a breezy boy. Yeah, Didn't I expect that? No, nah, yeah, he's unreal. Any classics from him? <sighs> I don't know. There's one on repeat. Uh, Talbot played the other day. He's been my housemate. Yeah. Oh, I forgot what it's called, but I haven't actually listened. I don't. He just found it. I don't know a new song. I used to listen to it. I go crazy. I was back. He released it a while ago. But producer Mitch, any questions you want to ask him? <laughs> no. Is there anything else, man? All good. All good. Uh, thank you. Well, thanks to everyone for watching. Thank you, everyone, for uh, subscribing to Ultra Socials. Thanks to Marco today for coming down. We're hoping to see you in the green and gold in a couple of months. When this video goes live, make sure to uh, not only comment below and, um, yeah, if there's any questions we want to ask you, we'll hopefully we'll reach out to you. But um, thank you so much for your time, bro. Thank you. We'll thanks for having me. We'll do some photos now. And, um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the future. Bye. That's it, bro. Beautiful. Wasn't that stressful, was it? Wasn't that stressful? Nah. <laughs>